Hey guys, welcome back to Token Tech. Today I want to make a short video about some of the things that I've been noticing with Ryzen 3rd generation or Zen 2. Right, So I recently purchased the Ryzen 7 3700X and I updated the BIOS on my Crosshair 6 Hero Wi-Fi edition, popped it in there, and have been running it in there for the past couple days. Performance has been great, but I have noticed one thing with my setup. So if we look over here on the right, you can see I have a uh, hardware monitor open, and on the left I have Prime 95 running the like maximum heat, maximum power, and all that stuff, right? And if we look, the CPU is boosting to about about 4 gigahertz, 3.99, 3.96 3 gigahertz, which is how like precision boost overdrive works, right? It'll auto overclock depending on load, depending on heat, depending on power, and so on and so on. So this is stressing the crap out of the CPU, so it's not going to boost up super high, but that's still a pretty, pretty good boost just for, you know, auto overclocking. And you'll see sometimes we'll go above 4. Okay, and it's 100% load. You can see here the wattage, right, that looks great. You know, we're under 120 watts which for something that's you know boosting itself and doing all this stuff and the performance we're getting out of this that's really good that's lower than my 1800x okay so that's that's pretty good for it being such an improvement over the 1800x uh, we can see voltage here which looks great as usual but this is the part that starts to make me wonder CPU temperatures we're going right up against 86 degrees 87 degrees Celsius and that might not sound horrible, and that might not sound too different than what other people have been showing in their benchmarks and their reviews of this chip, which this is not a review, right? I'll leave that to the to the bigger players in this space. But this is something I've noticed. I'm using a A240G, which if you don't know, that is a custom liquid cooling loop. I have my GPU and CPU hooked up to a 240 rad and a 360 rad. So this is plenty of radiator for this setup and the um, GPU is not running right now or at least not running too diff too much so it's not adding too much to the temperature but this CPU is getting very hot again with an air cooler maybe 87 degrees Celsius isn't so bad this is a custom liquid cooling loop right <laughs> this shouldn't be getting this hot um, and my last CPU didn't get this hot with this same setup and the thing that I find quite interesting is if I put my hand over the exhaust and feel the air that is being pumped out of my system, right, going through the radiator and out into the into my room, that air is slightly warm. It's not very hot, it's not very warm, it's barely warm. Okay, this pump is running at 100% speed, basically, and the fans are running well, they're running at 100% speed. <laughs> you can see the CPU fan RPM right there, 1800. That's basically full speed, okay? And the air is not very warm. What that tells me is that there isn't a sufficient transfer of heat between the CPU and the CPU water block because if it was efficiently transferring that heat, this, this water would be much hotter and this air coming out of the case would be much hotter. Because again, this is the air that's going through the radiators. This should be fairly, fairly warm air, and this air is barely warmer than ambient temperature. Okay. So at first, I thought maybe it was a bad mount, right? Took off the water block, cleaned off the CPU, cleaned off the water block. I even got new thermal paste just so that I didn't. I knew there was nothing wrong with it applied it. I even made sure to apply it specifically, um, not only just in the middle, but right on top of where the uh, the chiplet die is, so up in the upper right hand corner if you're looking at it straight on, just to make sure that that area did get sufficient amount of, of thermal paste. I put the CPU block back on and made sure to tighten it down as much as I could to get as much mounting pressure as I could get out of it turned it back on and I was getting the same exact results that we see right here 87 degrees Celsius maximum load now you might be thinking well this is max load this is a you know a, 
a stress test that's maxing out the CPU. You'll never see this. Even in editing and rendering situations, live streaming situations, it's not going to be as hard as, you know, this stress test from Prime95. The thing is, right, you, you can say that when I play games with this CPU, like Overwatch, again, not the hardest game to run, and again, I'm running that on the maximum settings with my graphics card at 1080p, and I'm still getting over 200 FPS, which is amazing. The CPU is great at gaming, but the temperatures get right up there, 75 to 80, 80 plus degrees Celsius. When I'm playing other games, yeah, the temperatures get up there. And again, when I'm playing games, now you have the GPU dumping heat into the loop as well. So if we're already having poor efficiency with this cooler on the CPU, then adding more heat to the water is not going to help, right? Unless it's getting that heat from the CPU, which it doesn't seem like it is. So that's something I've noticed over my past couple of days using this, right? Just so you know, I have the O11 dynamic case case designed for liquid cooling. I have the two radiators, one on the side, one on the top, and I have two Noctua intake fans pulling air in from the bottom, uh, blowing all the way up through the, the case. All right, so it's not my airflow. I have liquid cooling. It was working pretty well my last with my last CPU. And just so you know, this is the same motherboard and everything. So the only thing that has changed is the CPU itself. So that is what leads me to think that it might be the uh, the layout of the two chiplets, the I/O die and the the core die, right? The chiplet die, because they're offset. And again, this is just me, like armchair science engineering here. I'm not I'm not claiming that this is for a fact, but if you look at it, maybe I can pull up a picture. Let's see. Zen 2. I was looking up temperatures to see if anyone was talking about this, and I, I couldn't really find anything. But if we look at a picture, let's see if I can find one that's bigger. I'm not getting a lot here. But as you can see here, right, you have this offset to the left, and then the chiplet die, which has the cores, offset to the top right. And to me, it makes it seem like, well, that must mean the heat is really being focused in this top right corner because this die I'm assuming again not an engineer it uh, doesn't use as much power as the chiplet die so I'm assuming most of the heat is being focused right here in this upper right hand corner when most CPU coolers are designed to take heat away from the middle of the chip now again these two chips are still very close together and this there's a heat spreader on top of that and the CPU block goes on top of that right but I don't know, maybe that plays a part in it. Again, this is just my armchair engineering here. I don't know what I'm talking about here. And this is kind of part of the reason I'm making this video is that I want you guys to tell me what you think. And I want, if you guys know the answer or know what I can do to fix this, please let me know. So I have this A240G, right? That's the aluminum EK fluid gaming kit. And the CPU block just doesn't seem to be able to handle this CPU. I don't know what it is, but it just does not perform that well, at least in my uses. And like I said, I did take it off, cleaned it off, put new thermal paste, brand new, even applied it a little differently, put some in the middle, put some up here in the corner, reapplied it, remounted it, and got the same exact results. And again, if I just pull it down, you'll see we're up to 88 degrees Celsius. Now again, I am running OBS, so that's gonna impact it a little bit, adding more of a load, but we're getting up to 88 degrees Celsius and again I have great airflow I have two relatively large radiators here and now that it's getting up closer and closer to 90 degrees Celsius yeah the, the water is barely getting kind of warm like it's not even it's like barely hot air it's not even really hot at all and this test has been running for a little while now this isn't just me you know flicking it on and again, I really do think if the CPU was hitting 88 degrees Celsius, I would feel quite a bit more heat coming through these radiators. And I just don't. So that to me tells me that it's not efficiently transferring that heat into the CPU. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any solutions that I could try out and test to see if I can get this to work better. Maybe I need to add some washers to get more mounting pressure. Maybe the, the die or the heat spreader is like uneven. Maybe it's the um, the water block. Maybe the water block itself just isn't efficient enough for Ryzen chips and EK needs to design a new one. 
you know, and supply it to the people who have it and use Ryzen. Because this really, to me, this isn't cutting it. If you're using the stock cooler and you're getting 88 degrees Celsius, yeah, that makes sense. When you're using a custom liquid cooling loop and you're getting 88 degrees Celsius, that's a little concerning. And like I said, I can put my hand right on top of the, the radiator and feel the exhaust air. And yeah, of course it's warm, but it's not that warm. Now contrast that to when I'm running my graphics card. If I'm playing a game and running my graphics card, this air is very hot. It's efficiently taking the heat out of the graphics card and putting it into the water. When I'm running the CPU, yeah, barely, barely warm, barely warm. Again, I don't have any tools to te to show you to like take a temperature reading, but I'm just telling you from like I'm being honest here. Uh, this just isn't very warm air at all. Again, if there's something I'm missing, if there's something that you can inform me about, please let me know down below. But yeah, this is something I'm a little concerned about. I know it's not going to damage the chip, but I'm still concerned that, you know, I have this liquid cooling loop and it isn't performing to where I would want it to perform. Anyways, that's going to be it for me, guys. Let me know what you think down below. Give me your advice, any ideas you got, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Oh, yeah, and guys, just a little uh, PS here, a little follow-up. My idle temperatures are also sitting relatively high. Instead of sitting closer to like the 30s, in the mid 30s, it's sitting like mid 40s and even into the mid 50s. And no, this isn't just because I have OBS open. It's literally doing this no matter what. It'll bounce from like 37 all the way up to 57 back and forth. Um, which again, I don't think should be normal for an idling CPU just idling in Windows. Um, anyways, yeah, that's going to be it for me. See you in the next one.